them which are in any trouble. It says, God who comforts us in all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them who are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we are comforted of God. I don't know if you guys know this verse, but you know what? This verse, I read it the other week, and it smacked me silly, and I felt the love of God as I read it. Isaiah 50, verse 4, is Jesus speaking. Well, it's prophesying of Jesus. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has given me a tongue of the learned that I might know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Because Hebrews 5.8 says, Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience through the things which he suffered. Why did he have to suffer? Because he learned love in the flesh. We learn how to love and how to give a word in season to those who are in these troubles when we go through them. How does a preacher preach what God wants him to unless he spends a week going through what God is going to teach him? How does God teach a man? Second Corinthians 12 it says verse seven, or chapter 7 verse 10 Second Corinthians 12 verse 7 and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. That word buffet literally means to punch. That word buffet means to punch. Lest I should be exalted above measure. He's given me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord, not once, thrice, that it might be, it might depart from me. When Paul says he sought the Lord, I don't think that meant a five-minute prayer. I think it meant weeping and really seeking God to be delivered. And he said unto me, Jesus speaking, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, Paul said, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. <clears throat> These injustices are sent by the devil to destroy us, but allowed by God to make us. To make us the men and women that we are to be. Everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is written for our survival. From Genesis 1 to the end of Revelation, everything is in there, and none of it is there for entertainment or storytelling. None of it. But as it is written, the word is given for reproof, or reproof for teaching, for doctrine, for instruction to righteousness. And it says specifically, the Lord spoke to Peter and said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you like wheat. But you know what we learned about that story? that he won a temporary victory in Peter's life. 
He had caused Peter to deny the Lord, whether it was fear of man or whatever it was. But he won a temporary victory in Peter's life. But what Peter went through in that sifting made him who he became in Christ. And I want to think about one story uh, concerning Peter. Matthew 14, and this will be closing. Matthew 14, verse 29, it says, Jesus speaking, he was out on the water, and they were in the boat. Jesus said, come. Jesus is saying to each of us, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. He did walk on the water to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, we know the story, he was afraid and he began to sink. You know, it was when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus in the midst of that storm that Satan brought up. You know, the storm that we're talking about, the orchestration of Satan using whispering, using affliction, using even death. We're supposed to look to Jesus because we will walk on the water so long as we look at Jesus. If we, like Peter, begin to be consumed and devoured under the storm in the form of whispering, slander, affliction, de defamation, accusation, we will also sink under the raging storm. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, we will walk on water. And finally, Acts chapter 12. Verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. St. Peter was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, listen to this, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. <coughs> he's in prison, and he's sleeping on concrete, I'm sure, in between two soldiers in prison. If he's sleeping in that situation, we know that his eyes were on Jesus at this point. We know that he wasn't worried about what was going on around him. He saw the bigger picture of what God was doing. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers and bound with two chains. Not only was he on concrete in between two soldiers, he's bound by two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side. He raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. We need nothing but to look to Jesus and to allow God to justify us, because if we stand for the truth, it will be spoken against us. There will be affliction and persecution. Now I'm telling you that vision of the wolves, you know, that day's coming. You know, that day's coming. It's already here. I mean, you stand for the truth. You'll see the hatred of your peers, your co-workers, your family even, for some. Caleb's going to come up and we're going to... Um,